Hey guys, welcome back to Whiteboard Friday. This is Noel Coleman with Connect Healthcare. And today we're gonna to talk about something that I get questioned about a lot. In fact, I actually just got a question about it yesterday on a webinar and thought we would go ahead and just take a minute and walk through a three-step process for getting physician buy-in around transparency and patient experience. I get asked the question a lot, how do I get my physicians to buy into the idea of being held accountable uh, with their patient experience scores by publishing this stuff publicly? So. I want to walk through a couple of ideas here. First of all, I want to deal with something that we, uh, we actually have a conversation around a lot as well that deals with some of this. Um, is I get a question uh, or the comment from people a lot, hey, we're already doing internal transparency. We have it open on our vendor portal. We're producing reports and putting them on our intranet so physicians can see each other's scores and their own scores and data and such like that. <clears throat> well, the challenge with that is that when you dig into it a little bit further, uh, what you find out is two things that make this very different than uh, an actual rollout process for transparency to this planning on going public. So first of all, what you'll find is, is that when you open things up in a portal uh, through the, the survey vendor or if you're doing things through reports, the engagement of the physicians tends to be very low. Uh, in almost every case that I've uh, had conversations around, the engagement of physicians actually logging into the vendor portal and looking at this information uh, or being in, or having taken a look at the reports on an intranet or getting an email about this and actually looking at that has been very, very low. Now, the other side of this is also that this is very different than the kind of transparency that is saying, hey, that we're gonna be internally transparent and then we're taking the same data out and we're gonna ultimately make it publicly available. And the difference in that is that what you would show internally is not the same kind of data as what you would show publicly. And so this does not actually get them ready for external transparency. So that's actually something that we can, uh, we'll talk about another Whiteboard Friday. But as far as getting the physician buy-in on this, the first question you've got to ask uh, is around, is the CMO or the chief medical officer on board? Do you have them as a part of this? Because they're gonna be the ones who are gonna be in the meetings with physician leadership. They're gonna be the ones who are gonna be able to champion this for you and have the executive power and the executive support to be able to say, this is something we wanna do. This is why we think this is useful. And they're gonna have the credibility of this as a CMO instead of having other departments come in and say, hey, we wanna push this and, and you know, this is something that we wanna do. So that is absolutely a criteria that you want to make sure you've got established. Now, the second piece of this, though, is really reframing the question. Whenever I get the question, how do I get my physicians to buy into being held accountable? Uh, what I always tell them is, look, you've got to reframe that. The goal of the program is not to hold physicians accountable. That's an outcome of the program. What the real goal of the program is, is actually to put them in control of their own reputation online. So a lot of times what you can do is you can walk them through and show them their existing ratings on sites, show them the reputation they already have, and what it's, gonna, what it's gonna inevitably reveal is either they have really low scores on sites, like you go to Vitals and maybe it's a two-star doctor, uh, and they go, oh my gosh, that's terrible. And then they go, or you might show them, hey, you're a five-star doctor on health grades, but that's one rating. So the next person who comes in who's angry with you is going to be able to tank your score. And so coincidentally, that's the reason why we want to compare that to our internal ratings, because your internal ratings are gonna capture what we call the silently satisfied majority. It's the 80% of people who are never gonna hit the, the websites. Uh, I myself am one of these people very happy with all of the healthcare that I've received, but I'm not the person who's gonna go out to a rating site and leave a rating on a, on a provider. However, you can catch me with a survey. Somebody calls me, sends me an you know, email or something like that. I will respond to those sorts of things. I'm just not likely to go out to the web. And that's kind of where what you'll find is 80% that silently satisfied majority will be captured here. And so when you show them that comparison, then you'll begin to see this is a much more stable, a much more reliable, and a much more statistically relevant and generally positive uh, kind of rating. Now, this brings up a comment that you uh, set a cut topic that we really need to talk about, which is percentiles versus mean scores. So a lot of times physicians will say, oh, I don't wanna push my you know, patient experience scores out because they're not where I want them to be. Well, a lot of times what they're actually reacting to is because they're looking at a percentile. So whatever benchmarking database you're in, they may be looking at that and going, oh, I'm in the 70th percentile. And that to them, to a high performing individual like a physician, that's like getting a D on a paper and they don't want to publish that. Well, certainly makes sense, 
But what I oftentimes have discussions with people about is, is th this is lo like looking at a college class where you're graded on a bell curve, right? So if you make a 90 on a test, but you're graded on a bell curve and everybody else in the class was just super smart and they all made 95s, well, you'll end up with a 70% uh, rating. Maybe you end up with a D on the test, but it's not because you didn't understand the material. It's not because you can't uh, use that material in practical life. It's because the other people who happen to be in the class with you just understood it a little bit better. Um, and so when you look at uh, patient experience surveys, what you'll find is that most physicians are actually pretty good physicians, and most people are pretty happy with their healthcare. Um, and so what you do by capturing that 80% uh, that silently satisfied majority, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with mean scores that are actually pretty high. Most physicians end up somewhere around four, 4.2 stars, somewhere in that range uh, on average. And so you know, what you'll find is, is the difference between 70 70th percentile and 90th percentile, maybe it's a couple of points. So you're looking at a four star doctor versus a 4.5 star doctor. Um, and so, in the, but in the consumer's eyes, that's still a good physician. Um, and so this, this helps out quite a bit with helping get them to understand the goal is not to have some way of holding you accountable or holding your feet to the fire or doing something punitive. The goal here is try to help you to be able to manage and control your own reputation and to let the patients that are looking for us know how really good you actually are. And so I think this is in a really, really important part of reframing that question to get their buy-in. Now the third piece of this really is a fallback. So if you've gone through these phases and you really are just having some resistance to, to in the culture to the idea of transparency, um, you can fall back and say, hey, let's actually go to some of, the some of the physicians in the specialties that are more accustomed to natural competition within outside of the four walls of the hospital. So you know, or uh, organizations like uh, orthopedics, dermatologists, family practitioners, these are folks who have considerable competition outside of the hospital anyway, and they're used to being shopped, if you will, a little bit more than some of the other specialties. And so you can find some of those doctors and those specialties and help them to actually come on board. They're usually gonna be a lot more uh, open to this kind of idea. And so you can use them to come in, again, show them their ratings, uh, compare to the internal, explain the percentile versus mean, uh, and then be able to leverage that to the whole. And of course, Connect Healthcare does have a set of solutions that helps you automate and streamline a lot of these processes. Um, but this is how you can go from, hey, I want to do a program, to getting the physicians to be enthusiastically behind it. So I hope that helps, guys. And until next time, we'll talk to you then.